Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are back with another big benchmark video. This time around we are checking out Halo Infinite, where we've benchmarked over 25 GPUs, looking at two different image quality presets, and of course a range of different resolutions. Developed by 343 Industries, Halo Infinite is using the new Slip Space engine, and the campaign launched earlier this week on December the 8th. Diving right into it then with a look at the settings menu, here we have a very healthy list of tweakable options, as well as a choice of four quick presets. We are focusing on the ultra and medium presets today, but we do also look at preset scaling later in the video. One thing I do want to note on the settings though is, as anyone who watched any of these type of videos in the past from us, you will know we always benchmark at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. A quirk of Halo Infinite is there's actually no exclusive full screen mode, so it's either windowed or borderless full screen. By opting for the latter, we had to use the resolution scale slider to actually adjust resolution for our testing today. The quirk then is that on my 4K monitor, it's not actually possible to set an exact 1440p resolution. Instead, we had to go for a 67% render scale or 2573 by 1447. I do find this a bit odd, but I did want to point it out, so if you were wondering why we're benchmarking at that weird resolution instead of 2560 by 1440, well, now you know. For our benchmark sequence today then, we're recording the Master Chief sprinting over the open world on Zeta Halo. If you played the game, you will know FPS is significantly lower on the open world after the first two indoor missions, so of course that's what we're testing today. I also want to point out that today we are using the regular retail version of the game as anyone can get from Xbox Game Pass and not a special review build. Of course, all of our testing was done with our regular GPU test system provided to us by PC specialists. So this is built around an Intel i9-10900K. We've also got that paired with the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard and 32 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory. We're also using the latest drivers from both AMD and Nvidia, both of which promise support for Halo Infinite. So for AMD, that's the 21.12.1 driver, and for Nvidia, that's the 497.09 driver. Diving into the performance then, the first thing I really need to say before we actually look at the numbers themselves is, Unlike our usual how we like to do things, we're not actually going to be testing every single GPU at ultra settings at every resolution today. The reason for that is because it became quickly apparent to me that this game is particularly demanding to run and it's particularly VRAM heavy as well. We actually saw over 8GB of VRAM allocated for just 1080p ultra gaming. As a result of those two factors then, we actually saw a load of lower end and older GPUs which weren't even able to hit 30 FPS at 1080p using the Ultra preset. So instead of wasting both my time and your time by showing you those numbers, instead we did a few quick tests and if a GPU can run at 30 FPS using the Ultra preset, then we benchmarked it accordingly. But if it was clearly a struggle, then we only benchmarked it using the medium preset. With that said, we'll kick off with our 1080p Ultra preset data. And starting at the bottom, we can see it is not pretty viewing for those with Pascal GPUs. The GTX 1060 is a mess at 1080p Ultra settings, and honestly the 1070 isn't much better. The RTX 2060 and GTX 1080 are about on level pegging, averaging under 40 FPS, but honestly, at 1080p I would expect a lot better from those GPUs. Above those cards, we see the 5700 XT and 6600 XT, but both with an asterisk attached. Unfortunately, we have another issue we need to discuss, which causes significant performance issues for AMD GPUs in my testing. Basically, any AMD GPU I tested with 8GB of VRAM or less would show significant drops in performance after the first benchmark run. If I booted the game up from fresh, everything looks as expected. As soon as I quit back to the main menu and reloaded my save, however, performance would tank, as you can see here. This happened on every single AMD GPU I tested with 8GB or less VRAM. 
but not for the likes of the 6700 XT or 6800, which have 12 gigs and 16 gigs respectively. So that makes me think it's a potential memory management issue for AMD's 8 gig cards. It's important to note this only happened for me using ultra settings, so the performance using the medium preset is much better as we will see. This issue also didn't affect Nvidia cards, so it's definitely something AMD needs to look at. And for that reason, I decided to test most 8GB AMD GPUs using the medium preset only, as right now performance is just very inconsistent at ultra settings. Back to the 1080p ultra data though, another trend to point out is the fairly poor 1% low performance. The 3060 Ti for instance may well average about 70 FPS, but its 1% lows were down in the 49 FPS region, so gameplay isn't overly smooth with that GPU. In fact, the first GPU I tested which could keep the 1% lows above 60 FPS is actually the RX 6700 XT, and remember this is still only at 1080p resolution. Above that, the RX 6800 is doing very well against the RTX 3080, and both the 6800 XT and 6900 XT are faster than the RTX 3090. I'd still expect way more FPS than what we're actually seeing from those cards though, as the 6900 XT only hits 117 FPS at 1080p. As for the medium preset, performance is much more consistent here. It is still very tough on cards with just 4GB of VRAM, but the experience is smoother overall. That being said, we can once again see Pascal GPUs really struggling in Halo Infinite. The GTX 1060 can't even maintain a solid 30fps at 1080p medium settings, while the 1070 isn't even able to keep the 1% lows above 40fps. Contrast that against Vega, where even Vega 56 is faster than the GTX 1080, and we can see the AMD GPUs do have the upper hand in most instances. Even the RX 6600 XT isn't able to average over 92 FPS at 1080p medium settings, which for me is a bit worrying. Stepping up to 1440p then, looking first at the Ultra preset. This is getting very demanding here, with the RTX 3070 still seeing some choppy 1% lows and it's barely averaging 60 FPS. To illustrate the point about the dodgy frame times, Here's a quick graph for you comparing the 3060 Ti and the 6700 XT at 1440p ultra settings. Granted, the 6700 XT is a bit more consistent overall, possibly due to its increased frame buffer, but both GPUs exhibit clear spikes, though the 3060 Ti's are just much larger. Crucially though, neither GPU is giving us a particularly smooth experience. In fact, you'll need at least an RX 6800 just to keep the 1% lows above 60 FPS at 1440p. And then we can also see at the very top of the chart, the 6900 XT is still the top dog, though the RTX 3090 isn't too far behind. As for our 1440p medium preset testing, you'll need a GTX 1070 as the minimum here, but even that's still only just holding above 30 FPS. Other AMD GPUs like the Vega 56 are much smoother overall though, with better 1% lows, as clearly shown when comparing the 5600 XT to the RTX 2060. That being said, even the 6600 XT wasn't able to maintain a locked 60fps at 1440p medium settings, which honestly I think says far more about this game than it does about that particular GPU. Lastly, as our final test, we do also look at 4K Ultra settings, but it is some hard viewing, especially for those with RTX 3060 Ti's or RTX 3070 as they can barely keep the 1% lows above 30 FPS. RDNA 2, however, does appear to be doing much better, particularly the RX 6800, which looks very strong against the RTX 3080, when usually we'd expect the 3080 to be a fair bit faster. We can also see the 6900 XT is still taking the crown, averaging over 60 FPS, which honestly isn't bad, though there is definitely work to be done across the board to improve those frame times. After all that benchmark data then, we have established 
Halo Infinite is a particularly demanding game for almost any GPU on the market, especially so if you want to run at ultra settings. How much performance can be gained back though if you are happy to drop down a few image quality settings? That's what we're going to look at now with our preset scaling. To answer that question immediately, we can see that dropping from the ultra preset to high settings gained us back 21% FPS, while the medium preset is 11% more performant than the high settings. Dropping all the way down to low settings will net you another 20% boost compared to medium, so that works out as 61% higher FPS using the low preset compared to ultra. This is fairly decent scaling overall, but I wouldn't say it was anything out of the ordinary. There we have it then, that is it for our look at Halo Infinite's performance on the PC. I wouldn't say it's in the worst launch state I have ever seen from a game, but I think it is very clear there is a lot of work to be done across the board to get this game into a more playable position. AMD GPUs with 8GB VRAM or less showed really inconsistent performance for instance, with frame rates dropping significantly after my first benchmark run, and the only way to fix that was a game restart, so I think there is a clear issue with VRAM management on AMD GPUs. General frame pacing is another weak area across the board, and granted AMD GPUs did actually do a little bit better than Nvidia GPUs here, but no card I tested was really giving me a 100% smooth experience, so I'd definitely say 343 has to do a bit more work in that department. Speaking of Nvidia though, those with Pascal GPUs I think are going to be particularly disappointed, as evidenced by those with the GTX 1060, where I couldn't even maintain a locked 30 FPS at 1080p medium settings, which for me really is a very poor showing. Even when putting those fairly significant issues to one side, I'm just not convinced that the game's visuals can justify the levels of performance on offer. Yes, the game does look good when you admire the vistas and the landscapes that stretch out before you, but I wouldn't say it was anything special, and especially not when considering the fairly poor performance across the board. Anyway guys, that is really going to do it for this video. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up, and as always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and ding that notification bell, and why not come chat with us over on our Discord server, which is linked in the description. While you're there, you can also check out a link to our merch store, and even consider backing us on Patreon, where you can see some of our content early, and get access to exclusive giveaways. Anyway, that is it for this one. I'm Dominic 4 Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.